Alright, so series number 3, we have Isvar against Isart. So on Isvar's side, we have Olde, Bradley and Valaid. On Isart's side, we have Alaya, Miranda and Murmur. So let's see how it went. Alright, taking a look at these matchups right here. It's going to be a scary one coming out from Sweetheart because King Elda as a fire tank against uh, a Sweetheart's ice missile is going to be really rough. Uh, but we do have Miranda here, so she might be able to help out with uh, King Elda. But Elda's on the complete opposite side of the map. I, I'm guessing, and this is just a, you know, he can tell me if I'm right or wrong, but I'm guessing he expected this team to come out from the Sweetheart. <laughs> yep, and the, expected the missile unit to go up to the other side. I'm, I'm guessing Isvar expected this exact team, but didn't exa expect the uh, the initial placement. But like I said, he'll have to tell me that later. <laughs> but here we go. Here comes the first hit of damage onto Bradley. It's the flare. Got a lot of damage. That's, that's, that's what Sweetheart needs for this fight, because Bradley is going to be able to run away with this match if he's able to live. Oh, I think he's oh, already... The cast, oh, no, but the but he can go first. Yeah, so this could be scary if Miranda dies. Oh! oh wow. Yeah. That was it, a quick one. It, yeah, it, it was very quick. If that murmur but, didn't add casting time, I think it was uh, Ice Art's win. Oh, yeah. I, I absolutely, I think. I mean, not to discount... Well, okay, Valade does have full life, so there was still a chance. If it was just Valade and King Elda without the full life, then, uh, yeah, it was... I would, I would give that matchup to Sweetheart every single time. Uh, it, it was it was just hard, yeah. But with, if that casting time was just one tick sooner, it would have been a much much more uh, even fight. But yes, yeah. I mean, King Bradley doing King Bradley stuff. Like I said, it was it was expected. As soon as I saw him up in that offensive position, I was like, this this could either go very very badly or very very well. It it, it, it was it was a very aggressive positioning, and it worked out very well for Isvar. Yeah, I think that Isart don't really have a choice but to bring Dario next fight. I agree. I mean, I think, yeah, so I think Dario is the choice, but I'm just wondering who you pair up with them. Oh, uh, at this point, uh, honestly, I don't care. I just want to see Dario uh, on their side, even without VCs. Uh, <laughs> I just want him to tank it at Bradley a little bit to distract him. Yeah, I think so too. I think maybe Dario, Kadia, and Dark Fina or something. I don't know. It's it's hard to really construct a, a team right here. But uh, that, like I said, I'm just I'm just glancing at it. So I'm sure, I'm sure Sweetheart's got a lot more time to be able to to think about it and to be able to construct a better team than what I'm seeing here. But I do think the Dario would be huge. There's not really any ice over on his far side aside from the Valade. So. I think Dario would be a strong choice for sure. Yeah, the thing is that when you look at the strongest element of Isar, none of them are built to deal against Bradley. Uh, they're pretty weak to him, so uh, yeah, it's going to be a tough one <laughs> for the next one, so uh, let's check that out. Yeah, see what she brought. I think Isvar sticking with his team wouldn't be a bad idea. Which, which he does! <laughs> oh. Okay! Okay, I don't dislike this, because doesn't because the reason why I said Dario Kadia earlier is because Kadia, I think, has an Earth res buff um oh yeah true so that's why i was thinking okay you can double down on it by going dario and katia but maybe katia by herself is just enough to be able to survive with some hits from bradley but i mean sweetheart miranda and starlight elena are both not the tankiest units so it's it's gonna be hard to see because because calculator red does have a or is it calculator red one of his moves has an increased yes. accuracy yeah yeah so calculator red has an increased accuracy up so it'll be hard to really, uh... If she's bulky enough with the buffs and she received the heal in time, uh, maybe. Yeah, I could definitely see it, and especially if if Isfar isn't prepared for it. Um, I mean, there's a chance that even with the accuracy up, that Bradley still won't be accurate enough. I mean, we've seen it happen in the matchup against Sand Rooster with uh, the Glaciella and her having her accuracy up attack still not being able to hit. <laughs> so. There's a chance if Isfar is not prepared that Sweetheart could just steal, run away with this match. All right, so uh, same team on the Isvar side. On uh, Isart side, we have Elena, Keria, and Miranda. So uh, let's see how it went. So Isvar pretty aggressive, very right in front. So a courage yep. buff at first. Running the same strategy as last time, but also you'll, one of the key things that you'll notice is that he didn't move uh, King Elda over to the other side guessing that Iceheart would um, start over on this side as well. So now King Elda will actually have a chance to tank up some damage. Uh, but I think one of the main things that we're going to be able to see here is, does Katia get the Earth Res buff off? Which it looks like she's going to be able to. 
And then also, are, is Isvar going to have the accuracy needed to be able to hit these very evasive units? Because uh, I know Sweetheart loves playing with these units, so she has gotten them down to a science. <laughs> uh, so it'll be interesting to see how much damage that she's able to do. Because that both that ice res and that uh, or ice damage up and that protect will not matter against these fully magical units coming out from Sweetheart's side. So here's the moment of truth right here. If he's yes. able to hit, and both hits landed, but they survived, which yes, is he. Yes, and is going next. Yes, oh, so okay. that after Miranda, of course. And a lot of oh, damage on that all day, honestly. That's really big. Yeah, that was really big. That's something that I really needed to see because because uh, the Bradley's just gonna keep on dealing damage over and over until this King Eld is down. And so oh. the faster you can chew through, but this is gonna be rough here. Because uh, he can also hit, and then Bradley goes next. So this. Yeah, I think it's game. It could be, uh, I, but also I don't know if Bradley was able to get off many buffs. Okay, he has enough AP to at least do one more. So yeah. Oh yeah, but true. I forgot about courage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it's still rough for Sweetheart, but the courage definitely helps. Oh wow. Oh, that's yeah, a lot of damage. Yeah, that's what you must be. Uh, I think that Bradley is very low on AP. So okay, I think okay. So too. Yeah, he has enough. Oh, this is. This could be, and she goes before the Valade. Huh. This could be huge. Oh yeah, oh. but he has courage. And, he has uh, no AP CDL. left. He has no AP left, so if he can't hit, I mean, he should be able to hit with the standard attack. Oh, this is so close. So and does her heal come off first? Because if her heal comes off before the basic, oh, it doesn't. Nope. And oh, oh, no. that was fortunately. Yeah. <laughs> That was exact because if that heal once again the casting time again if that ca if that casting time just happened a tick earlier, then the Bradley's a, a basic attack would not have uh, killed the element and she would have been able to retaliate and kill both of them. But unfortunately for Sweetheart, it this is all but game. I don't yeah. know how Katia solos <laughs> solos this. Yeah, I don't think that the Oli is on, and we have a full life. Okay, no, <laughs> at least it failed. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, I think that the uh, strategy with the Kalia was uh, a right one. But yeah, unfortunately, I think that her team needed to be a little bit faster, though. Yeah, I think that this strategy was brilliant from Iceheart. I do like this a lot. Uh, I do. I, I think I even liked it better than what I predicted with the Dario and Kadia combo. Because I would have been able to tank Bradley a lot better. But honestly, I think that the damage was really needed because... That King Elda, he was he was very, very tanky, but he was also melting pretty quickly to uh, Iceheart's units. I, I really like the strategy coming out from Iceheart. I really don't know uh, what else that she could have done. It's, it was just a very oppressive team coming out from Isvar, and I think that uh, given the circumstances, she did a very good job. Yeah, but unfortunately, Bradley was too much. <laughs> yeah, as he tends to be. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's a crazy unit. Uh, like I said, I think that the... Uh, accuracy was spot on. Uh, I don't know how evasive Iceheart's units were, but both the uh, King Elda and the Bradley were able to hit. So maybe Iceheart went for more of a damaging and uh, bulky side, which we saw both of those coming out from her units, being able to survive a calculated rend and also um, dealing massive damage to King Elda. So I wouldn't be surprised if she went for more of a damaging and bulk route as opposed to an evasive route. Um, but yeah, the evasion not kick. I don't think a single attack missed over on his far side, uh, which was uh, a bit disparaging to see over for Iceheart. I think it was a guaranteed hit attack on the old day. Oh, it was? Okay, well, I take that back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, next round we're going to have Isvar against uh, GB79. Oh, nice. Okay, that'll be, that'll be, once again, another really interesting match. All right, so congratulations to Isvar and uh, GG to Iceheart. Nice try. Yep, GG to both players. All right, so last series of the day, we have Kason against Rem9. So on Kason's side, we have Schulzolt, Jaden, and Lucia. On Rem9 side, we have Sosha, Edward, and Delita. So let's see how it went. All right, right off the bat, I can easily tell what Kason's strategy is. So you got the Jaden and Lucia. We got the <laughs> high ground on this map. It's, it's a pretty simple strategy to see, and it's a very effective one. Uh, coming off of Ram 9 side, I was actually very confused to see the Delita because 
Kason's, I, I was like, okay, is it for the silence? But most of Kason's units are are uh, physical, <laughs> or is it because of the elements? But Kason has no ice, <laughs> so I was very confused. But I was like, okay, it has to be. He has a very strong physical barrier, and he also has the dark Tetris synergy uh, with the wind units, which I think is going to be very strong for that uh, man eater and unit res. So I could, uh, I can understand it a bit more. <laughs> And with that being said, this team from Ram 9 is also very scary. If Ed gets to the high ground in time before uh, the ranged units gun him down, he can oh. deal some crazy damage. So and Elika did a lot damage, of damage on that Chuzult. Yeah, that's uh, not what you, exactly what you want to see. But at least it didn't one-shot him and bring him down to Courage. So <laughs> he still has a chance to be able to do something this match. But... Oh, but Delita gets to go again before Shoot Cell does, so oh, wow. I take that back. Maybe he won't. <laughs> yeah, that haste is uh, putting in some work. All right, so Courage and he'll back now. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, now we have uh, Jaden, so Magic, Magic Blast Plus did a ton of damage on both units. So now we have Shuzol. Is he uh, going to la... Oh, no, he Train Force. But I think oh, okay. it was already oh, full, so... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> just topping off a little bit more. So uh, the, oh, oh, here we go. Did he add the, a four move? I did not notice. I think it was one, two, three. I think it is four. I think you're right. Oh, that's really oh, huge because wow. he, he's been able to uh, hit uh, Jaden just because of this. Okay. So, but, but like, maybe I'm blind. <laughs> so let's <laughs> jump. So killing that uh, Shulzil. No. Next, we have Edward. Probably killing that uh, Jaden. Oh no, going for the Lucia on top. Huh. That's interesting. Oh, maybe. Yeah, I'm not sure why he went for the Lucia, but I mean, he had the damage to do it, so he he's he like, cold. okay, I can, <laughs> I can I can deal. Yeah, I can deal nine thousand. I'm not gonna waste it on Jaden. He's already basically dead. Yeah. Uh. But yeah, maybe she had a bow tire. I didn't I didn't notice the uh, movement. Uh. But either way, yeah, that's. That's game right there. <laughs> oh man, I, I oh. thought that it was uh, Kaysan's game to drop, but uh, honestly, that that Ace of Delita did a really, really good job. Yeah, the Ace of Delita put in a lot of work, and honestly, I expected the range units to be able to start dealing damage a lot sooner than they would, uh, because uh, I mean, so Jaden, and also I expected Jaden to deal a little bit more because. Uh, Edward isn't really known for having high magic res or anything like that, and I'm, so I must have missed a barrier or something in there because I think Jaden only ended up dealing about three thousand to Edward, which for Jaden I would have expected to see something in the six to seven thousand range. Yeah. So I, yeah, there's probably a barrier or something that I had missed there. Like I said, I miss a lot of things just trying to <laughs> keep track of everything uh, off the bat. But uh, yeah, I was surprised by the bulkiness on Ram 9's side and. Yeah, it was just a masterclass overall. That uh, plus one move on Edward really did uh, a difference. Yeah, uh, towards the end there, when because uh, Delita was out of AP when he was supposed to be able to take out that Jaden, and so all he ended up doing was using his uh, haste buff. But I mean, at the at the end, it didn't matter because Edward was still mighty healthy and said, "Okay, I, you've you've done your work. I'm gonna go up here. I'm gonna take care of this Lucia. You just you just relax, buddy." <laughs> all right. So, uh, what kind of adjustment can we see uh, for the next fight? I think Kason probably will probably need to change up the whole strategy. I think that the missile units just were not putting in the work that he would expect to see here. So I'm expecting a full shift to either Greatsword or Axe, honestly. Given Ram 9's elements, I think Greatsword might be a little bit more tricky. So I... I mean, maybe it's just the hopeful in me, but I'm expecting to see the Axe. Bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, okay. Maybe not full axe because he does have the Edward Elric, of course, and going two Earth units into that would be very scary. But I think the Vega could definitely make an appearance here, and I wouldn't be surprised to see it. All right, so uh, let's check that out. So uh, not completely. <laughs> yeah, like I said, I didn't expect to see the axe units, but I definitely expect to see the Vega. So uh, I am ex I am surprised on the switch up from Ram Nine side though. Uh, the Delita was putting in the work, so but I, I do say, I do see the logic behind the URL, so I, I do like that too. All right, so uh, from Ram Knight's side, it, uh, there's only been a switch between Delita and URL. On Case on side, we have uh, Shuzolt again, but now we have Viga and Lucia. So let's see how it went. Yep, and I do like the switch out from the Viga, uh, from the Jaden to the Viga, because Jaden. Fortunately, was not putting in the amount of work that we were hoping to see him do last match. Uh, like I said, the Magic Blast only ended up dealing about 3,000, and 
we were expecting to see a whole lot more. But I do like this a lot more. I like the Vega here. Um, I think he's an amazing unit that I completely underrated, but Kason has been showing me the error of my ways. <laughs> Uh, and having the uh, lightning synergy here will be massive. But uh, once again, Ram 9 oh, probably Kingblade. expecting this, which is why oh, Kingblade would be nice to be able to get off some additional buffs too. But like I was saying, I think Ram 9 definitely expected to see this swap because he has the Urel now uh, instead of the Delita. So that Earth uh, that Earth might come in handy. And with Vega's main source of survivability being that Courage, also huge. So I think that this was a very purposeful and uh, intended tech from Ram 9 onto the, and expecting the Vega coming out from Kason. Shoes it at the time to use his buff, which is really great for Kason. Yeah, but this will, let's say there's the double courage remove and the double buff remove. So that's, yeah. that's massive. Yeah, but that wasn't uh, really a, a lot of damage too. That's true. It's, it wasn't a lot of damage and I'm I'm, uh, if URL also doesn't deal that much damage, which I mean, I expect she will. Um, oh. But if she doesn't deal a lot of damage, then I think this is all Ram. Not, or wow. I think this is all for Kason. <laughs> yeah, that was. So that was, that was doing uh, about uh, 4k to each, but. Oh! Ow! <laughs> <laughs> so she's she out uh, picking up where uh, Vega left up. All right, so we have URL. Let's see. Uh, well, let's see what damage she can do. Because this could be scary. Okay, that was not that much. I mean, Sh 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 is still alive, yeah. But Edward gets to follow it up. It's a strike chain. Oh my <laughs> goodness! <laughs> that reflex. That was huge. That was massive. Because I, I think Lucia still would have been able to clean up because she is up there, nice and safe. <laughs> Actually, maybe not with the courage, but I mean, but that that, that evade was huge. Because I definitely think that Edward would have killed with that strike chain there. Um, but. I, I still think that this was Kason's match, even if that, even if he did end up dying, because I think that the Lucia would have been able to survive. Uh, I fully expect her to survive this, and does, expect to survive. Does Lucia her. have uh, bow tie? Because it's the second time that uh, the player went for that uh, <laughs> that Lucia on top instead of uh, killing that unit at the bottom. <laughs> you know what? I made a mental note to to take, keep track of that, and I forgot as soon as the match started again. <laughs> At this point, I can only imagine that that's the case. Like she moved a much less than the other units overall, and with how much that the uh, units seemed to be drawn to her, I think that she had to be wearing the bow tie, which ended up being a massive tech here also. So that was very smart coming out from Kason. Amazing change. I also think it was a great change coming out from Ram 9. Uh, there's not really any critiques I can give on either. They were, they were both played exceedingly well. And and like I said, I think even without the reflex, I don't think that was the deciding factor of the match. But it would have been a lot closer because I think that yeah. we would have had the exact same position where, where this match ended up, except it would have been uh, Edward versus Lucia. And they both would have been at like one hit each. And I think Lucia would have been able to get off that final hit. It was still very, very close. <laughs> Yeah, the uh, execution I'll... coming from Kason was really clutch. Uh, Viga and Shuzel be able to go uh, one after another. <laughs> it dealt like a 10 kid damage. It was a lot. Yeah, that that initial and like I said, the keen blade to be able to get off those early buffs. It was, I mean, honestly, just very well executed, very tight gameplay. Uh, to the point where, honestly, when you're, I mean, because I know you're gonna ask, I honestly have no idea what kind of adjustments to make here. <laughs> I mean. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, there's not really anything that I can really critique because I just felt like both players had very solid game plans that both worked very well. Uh, I feel like at this point, I, I mean, honestly, I feel like at this point, you could just both bring back the exact same teams and just have slight adjustments in terms of your equipments and initial placements. <laughs> yeah, I feel like they both bring the same team. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't fault Ram9 for changing because, you know, obviously if, if you if you lost, there's probably stuff to improve on, but it was just such a strong team. It worked so well. It was, I, I think, just some slight equipment or uh, initial placement stuff would would put us over the top. Yeah, because uh, URL didn't do a lot of damage even uh, if she's a, a Earth unit against those two uh, Lightning units. Yeah, that was one of the things I was a little surprised on, and um, not quite sure why. And I said it, it could just it, basically she was doing the exact same amount of damage as uh, Edward for the most part. I mean, it could just be because she's an older unit. Uh, I did expect to see a little bit more coming out from her. All right, so let's see uh, what the changes they made. All right, so on oh. Kason's side, we have a switch between uh, Lucia and Revolka. On Ram 9's side, he decided to go with Alphonse. 
So uh, we have a switch up between Sergius and uh, Sosha, and the switch up between Alphonse and Edward, and uh, sticking with Euro, probably predicting uh, that uh, Lightning uh, cast again. In fact, it looks like uh, from Ram 9 side, he's predicting the exact. He's predicting like what we predicted: the exact same team coming out from Kason. Yeah. But Kason, once again, playing that 5D chess, he's like, okay, I know you're gonna predict the Lucia, and so instead of the Lucia, and uh, I'm gonna bring the elemental counter to the elemental counter. <laughs> so yeah, I think the Surges was, in my, if I were to take a guess, was uh, a, a choice against the Lucia, but then the Revelka would be the choice against the uh, the Surges. So. It's interesting. I, I, d I doubt that's the only reason they brought those units, but I, I, I guarantee it was probably a, uh, a factor there. <laughs> Once yeah. again, getting the King Blade off and getting some initial buffs. I really like this coming out from Case on side. And the Vega getting his Unfailing Jealousy up. So I, honestly, I like the positioning and the buff rotation coming out from Case on. I think this is very strong. And I'm a little worried uh, to see if. Alphonse, because he's a lightning tank, he can wear that lightning ring. I wonder how much lightning res that Alphonse is, wear, is carrying, because that's one thing, is he can definitely oh. deal some damage. Speaking of damage... <laughs> yes, that, that was a lot of damage from Sir Jess on that uh, Chuzult. Yeah, and also removed his courage, so that's not what you want to oh. see for Shuzult. Yeah, that's really bad, because <laughs> he has to be at 10% or less to proc that ill back. Oh, oh, but he but barely survived. Live. <laughs> <laughs> There's the ten percent. Okay, well that that worked out very well in Kason's favor. But yes. let's see if he survives this because he does. It won't be a chain, but the elemental advantage. Okay, uh, only again, five thousand. Much damage, yeah. Yeah. Does he pressure? Okay, and he stop. Oh, okay. Only <laughs> on, on the surges, surges. <laughs> which isn't the worst thing for Ram Nine. So that's uh, that's really good to see for Ram Nine's side. Uh, I mean, not really good because you still have a unit that stopped, but if, if there's a unit stopped, reflex. you want it to be the search. Oh my gosh, the reflex. <laughs> That's really uh, clutch. Uh, yeah. Reveal care, Holy Night Purge, so killing. Oh no, okay, she had the um, courage and city up now, so she's be able to go again. So let's see what she's doing. Probably killing that. Uh, yeah, she was out. And nearly oh. killing that Reveal Oh my goodness, Revelka surviving with a sliver of health. And he's immobilized, so he can't even finish the job. That's yeah, huge that's for Kason. Oh, but that's also huge for Ram 9 that he's only in range to hit the Surges, who wasn't yeah. a factor because he was stopped. So this is. Oh, oh, and she can't hit the URL because. Because oh, of she hate. She doesn't have the AoE. Yeah, because of the hate, and she doesn't have the AoE. That's huge for Ram 9. This. Going for both, oh. but throwing very, very little damage on that uh, uh, Vega. <laughs> Another buff on the, <laughs> that uh, immobilized Alphonse. Uh, Viga was really slow this game. Uh, he didn't. He didn't have uh, a lot of turns. No, he had. He, he had a lot of turns, but he just spent a lot of it down buffing on the bottom. If I wish he was able to get into the battle a little sooner. If he, uh, but like I said, that berserk not landing could be huge, and also him still having the hate to not kill this pesky URL is also huge. <laughs> uh, Still not in range to be able to hit the Vega. Man, this, this is really anyone's turn. match. Yeah. Yeah, honestly, yeah. Oh. oh, man. I really don't know who I would give this to at this point. It, it looks like it's in Kason's favor, but now you can strike chain against the Vega. The damage onto the Alphonse hasn't been too high. So. Oh, that oh. movement was big. <laughs> it was. Because, I mean, maybe Alphonse is out of hate at this point. And. Oh, but she gets a lap. Yeah, it's what I said. Oh my that, goodness. That big guy is very slow. Oh, yeah, you're reflex. right. <laughs> oh, and the reflex. Oh my goodness. I mean, Kason got a reflex earlier with the shut cell, so one deserves the other. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that reflex was the uh, nail in the coffin here. I don't think it would have mattered, but... Oh, man. I think it did. Oh, oh yeah, I mean, oh. because of that re-raise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think even without the re-raise, that would have mattered, but... Oh, man. D does he get one more turn? No, I think the I think Urel's... No, he does get one more turn. Okay, if he survives, which I don't know if he will. Yeah, yep. he does not survive. Okay. Wow. <laughs> that was incredibly ah, tight. It was. There's way too many things that happened that match that... any If any one of those things were changed, it, it easily could have... The whole match would have just been played out differently. 
like I said, there's the stop, the immobilize, the reflexes that happened. Man, there was just so much that happened this match. And like I said, that, that's just like the status effects, not mentioning the positioning and everything else that this match easily could have gone either way. I feel like both teams were very evenly matched. Just like the last match, there really wasn't really much I can critique, you know? <laughs> there's there's just so much. I guess the, the one thing that came, that uh, Numero kept mentioning is that the Viga did seem to be a bit on the slow side with uh, Urel being able to lap him was really unfortunate at the end there. I mean, the reflex was the most unfortunate part, but the <laughs> lapping also, I think because she was able to chain with herself, her first hit did like 2,000, whereas her second hit did about 4,000. And you, you saw how much health Viga had at the end of that. He easily could have probably brought that back if that 4,000 damage wasn't there. So yeah, it was, I, I can't I can't even like to fault case on or anything for that match. That was very, very well played. I think that there's a lot of RNG and stuff that happened that match that <laughs> it easily could have gone either way and I would not have been mad. It was it was incredibly well played by both players. Yeah, that's very uh, unfortunate for Kason because that uh, immobilize on Alphonse was very, very clutch. In the end, yeah, the, that Viga was uh, too slow, he didn't attack enough times. But uh, what I could give to him is that uh, I uh, hurt resistance uh, on his team. Because that URL really did not do a lot of damage uh, all fight long. Oh yeah, like I said, I was expecting URL to do so much more damage, but I mean, she was able to deal damage when she was capping a chain. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> the uh, damage that she was doing against uh, even the Shut Cell was uh, lower than I had expected. So it was... Uh, once again, I mean, I, I know I've been said this a lot, but it was really just well played for both players. The, the bulkiness was there. I saw some status effects getting resisted. I saw the Berserk not land onto the Alphonse. I saw, you know, th there was yeah, yeah. definitely a lot of preparation for both players that clearly showed. And like I said, the match came down very into the wire. There's not really much for me to critique or say. <laughs> it was just really well. It was just a really good motive that I just love to watch. You know, it was it was really, really good. Yeah, I know that they uh, did not do all their matches in the one day, so uh, they had time to prepare in between. Yeah, and it shows. It, it, it clearly, clearly shows. <laughs> all right, so a GG to both players, and congratulations to Rem9. Who is going to face Jesus LBL in the next round? Man, that's a, that's a rough match, too. <laughs> I'm so excited for these next round of matches. No, I'm not excited about the fact that you're going to be going against Alcor, which means that only one guildy is going to be going to the finals there. Uh, I'm kind of excited for my matchup against uh, Alcor. <laughs> the last time it was a little bit wonky, but <laughs> this time... Uh, <laughs> but it's always nice to face Alcor in any tournament. Oh, yeah. And I was going to, like, no shade thrown to Alcor, but with his units that he chose, every fight against him is going to be wonky. <laughs> They're <laughs> yes. units that you never see. They have tons of status effects. Like, man, Alcor is one of those opponents that I'm glad I didn't get to phase up against because I would not have any idea what to do. <laughs> Man's brilliant. <laughs> this will be definitely some interesting matches. Uh, I'm excited to see Ram9 versus Jesus LBL. Uh, I forgot what the match is for next week, or what the map is for next week, but, I mean, it'll be really fun to watch. All right, so uh, let's jump into the updated playoff tree. All right, so here's the portrait for next week. So uh, we'll have uh, Numero 80 against Alcor. Macrain against Torambar, GB79 against Isvar, and Ram9 against Jesus. So it's going to be a pretty packed uh, week again, and we are really excited to see those matches. Absolutely. As I've mentioned many, many times before, I would not be surprised to see any of these upsets happen. There are incredible players. Uh, all, all eight of them here is just, they're going to be matches that you want to set your alarm for. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so thank you for uh, listening and I uh, hope to see you next week in the next video. Absolutely, have a great week.